Thanks a lot. I'm, I'm mostly up here to kind of shed all the technical of the DEIS and bring this into the important thing, which is this thing here, your hearts and your minds. Um, I would be involved in this campaign even if it wasn't in my backyard. As a matter of fact, where I live, I'm far from the other end. I'm actually in in the south or er, in southeast corner rather than the northwest corner. So, um, but I hike it all all the time, and I've experienced a lot of things up there. One of the things that you know, I just want to kind of share a few stories. Two years ago, I'm up at my mailbox, which is at the apex of the ridge on, on that corner, and a river otter came swarming by. What's a river otter doing up on Paradise Ridge? Well, what it's doing up there is. Paradise Ridge is, is like a lot of Idaho, it's, it's a wild place, and even though there's a few houses up there dispersed here and there, there's a, there's a lot of wild critters that take advantage of that, and there isn't much of that out in the farm fields, and there isn't much of that anywhere but where there, where there are these small wild places, and I, among some of the species that I've run into a few years ago, I was just up in the set-aside field behind my house, and I thought, I'll call and see if a turkey will gobble out back behind here. And so I set up my turkey call, and I looked over just the crest of the next ridge, and here come a bobcat running at full bore towards me. It was wow. really neat. When he saw me and my dog, he turned in high to him the other direction. Very surprised not to see a turkey, but so there's a bobcat there. Um, go back even further back, years ago, my landlord gave me a call, and he said, I want you guys to be concerned because we've had this call of a, there's a cougar up on the ridge and there's problems with it. And not even a week before that, I saw across the road and I was like, well, that was a cougar, but I convinced myself it was a deer. And then a couple weeks later, I found the cat tracks up there and it was a, a big mother cat and her, her baby cat and they had a much smaller track, but they were definitely cougar tracks and then later ran into the hound otter who was sent up there to I ran in the cougar and get him off of Paradise Ridge, but the cougar had already moved along. Um, later that summer, I, I climbed a tree that's big, and back there, one of these big mutated ponderosa pines growing on the backside, and I found deer hide way up in the tree, a bunch of hair and stuff on this big land branch where, where this cougar had obviously pulled a cougar up in there, or, or a deer up in there and ate on it. Um, it's far enough from house, it's not just on the south side, but there's, there's a there's a canyon there on the north side that has virtually no houses at all. Really big and harbors a lot of wildlife. Um, amongst the things we've seen, we've seen bald eagles and golden eagles. And a few years ago also, um, I'm going to say this goes back about eight years ago, I was hiking down in Soton Creek or, or down in Hell's Canyon area and found a, a big horn sheep skull. And I turned it into the fishing game and I told them I found tracks and scat of bighorn sheep two different times up on Paradise Ridge. But I wasn't sure because I'd never seen them. And they assured me that it could be quite the possibility because that same year I'd seen the scat in tracks, they had found a bighorn sheep dead as far as potlatch. So we got critters of all sorts wandering up there. Two hunting seasons ago, I was watching a field about dark. And as a matter of fact, it was just about as dark as you could possibly be while still standing there with your rifle. And out came 25 out. They, they bugled before they came out, which was really odd because it was late November. And there was a bull and maybe three or four raghorns and, and a bunch of cows and calves. And I'm watching them as they go out to the field and they, he bugles again, which is odd. And then a few minutes later, another bugle happens up above me, and another 25 elk come out. Now, I've never seen the likes of this, but roughly 50 elk right in front of me wandering out into the fields of Paradise Ridge off of the back. And so I thought I grunt a little bit. I, I learned this when I was a kid. Kind of <laughs> and I made that noise, and the elk replied right afterwards and was followed by three wolf howls. Those elk were, were moving through there because they had wolves right on their, on their tail, and I, I suggest even that the bulls were bugling to kind of pull the wolves away from the rest of the herd, because two days later there was a bunch of cows around that there were no longer bulls and stuff up there. Um, me and Erica wait every spring as we, we ski out there in, the, in the, this time of year, but then we wait for the spring to come for the wildflowers to hit on Paradise Ridge, and 
You know, up comes the, the spring beauties and the grass widows, purple and white, and the buttercups are the first to come up, and they spread around, and then we watch as all these new species just continue in, you know, you got the got the Rocky Mountain Lady Slipper Orchid that grows on our side of the ridge, and then um, the wild irises and, and the fiddle area, and it, it just becomes this very colorful and beautiful place up there. And it is a remnant, it's a small remnant of, of, of what the Palouse used to be like, and little wild places like that, they aren't everywhere, but there's, you know, they really look at these alignments and they say, well, we don't want to disrupt farm fields. Well, let's look at percentage of what there is out there. And I'm sorry, those farm fields might be the bread and butter, but it goes back before Homo sapien, and there's something that's more important, and that's those wild places. And we have way less of them than we do farm fields, so I just, I, I just don't even buy that argument. And you really got to think about the next step. This is all seems pretty crazy, and that's because it is. And the mitigation, the lawsuit, is going to follow. <laughs> if, if, they, if they prove, if they don't listen to us on this draft, and they go through with it, we will sue. And the next step after that, of course, is stuff that other people don't like to talk about, but people who know me well know I talk about it, which is called civil disobedience. And that isn't really ever considered in, in their DEIS, but that's the only thing. The only thing that stops this planet from being destroyed is people who are willing to get out there and, and do civil disobedience and try to stop projects like this or the Alberta tar sands or fracking. Or, I mean, they're coming from us at every angle, and there's a lot of reasons to get involved. And I'm here to inspire you and talk to you guys about don't let the intellect catch you up. You have a heart. And that heart is connected to those wild places. And if it is, that small little piece up there called Paradise Ridge is so important to this community of Moscow to have wild places. Now, I know that that really doesn't come that close up, but we look at that weed patch, that looks pretty important. But let's think about it this way. I, I learned at a really young age to even go halfway to the door forever. It's just exponential, halfway, halfway, halfway. But eventually you obstruct that door and it doesn't open and shut properly to work right. And this is an example of, of going halfway and halfway to the door. We just we just don't want them up there because eventually that door is not going to work and open and shut and function right. And and that area is, is really dear and precious. And and yeah, last year I was up there wandering around as usual up on the ridge behind my house enjoying the spring. And in the, the water started to trickle down. I looked down and I found a, a night crawler there, which I thought, oh, it's just a night crawler, and I got ready to throw it, and I thought, there's something different about this night crawler. I wonder if he's one of those fangled loose earthworms that I've heard about. And I went down and I and I and I called up the University of Idaho and said, What does this thing look like? I'm kinda of on the internet here, and it doesn't look at all like what they say on the internet, and never got a response back again went by. And then the next day I said, Well, never mind, I probably they haven't got one. I'm gonna turn it loose out in the yard. And then the phone got picked up and said, hey, don't do it yet. Check these few things, these indicators that would tell you whether it was. And sure enough, she mentioned the things that it was. And I had in my hand a specimen of the giant blue earthworm. That specimen went up to the lab and died because it had been ran over because right? they maintained that ridge to go up to the antennas. And they had had vehicles going up that ridge that had run over this thing that was running. But a week later, or maybe two, a friend of mine found one right about the same place. So they're up there, and they are a remnant species, and you have the Fish and Wildlife Service saying, this species is so rare. It's so rare, we don't know nothing about it, so we ain't gonna list it. <laughs> now, that, that seems really strange to be something so rare that you, that you can't even list it. It's so rare, and yet it's not to be considered part of the thing. And I know that if you grind up the soil, you till it up, and you, if those loose work, earthworms are up there because there's trees and rocks and stuff, you couldn't make agriculture. And if they're ever going to spread again and come back down the hill, taking a road bed right through that is not going to enhance or, or make their lives any better. And I'm just here one more time. I'm going to say it. Brett's going to come up and tell you a little about, about the organizing we're doing and how we're going to continue to organize around this issue. 
Don't let them mess with your head with a bunch of mumbo-jumbo, bureaucratic, DEIS, or mythological safety issues. You don't hear anybody saying that the Paradise Ridge people are, are killing people because of gun ownership. I mean, it, it's, it's just funny because I, I look at it as somebody said that the gun lobby thing, it, it compares to this. Now, let me, let me, let me give my mind right now. They don't blame the NRA every time somebody dies in America, but yet some bureaucrats in town, some people who've wrote the paper, who I'll, I'll stay aside, has tried to blame the Paradise Ridge Coalition for the deaths that's happened on the highway. That kind of logic, that kind of, it, it stinks of corruption and weirdness. I mean, it's just way out of hand. You see those letters to the editor, use your heart, respond to them. That's nonsensical. None of us want anybody to die, but a lot of us want wild places. And that's, use your heart, use your head. We're going to fight this. Thanks.